What's up all you quantum maniacs? I'm Daquan Young and today we present 10 epic times where an announcer went crazy over one play. Don't forget to subscribe to TPS and make sure you hit the bell and turn on our notifications and join the notification squad. And don't forget to leave your video ideas down in the comment section below. We're looking and we'll give you a shout out in the video if you use it. And a big shout out to this guy because I'm just gonna butcher that name. First, Mr. Samir Naga. Naga. Not gonna work here anymore anyway. <laughs> now, think of the most iconic moments that have happened in professional sports. You don't just think of the play itself, you also think of the epic play call made by the announcer. The person in the broadcast booth can ruin a great moment. We're talking about Joe Buck. Or they can help add to its legacy. Every sports fan loves it when an announcer goes crazy. Whether it means getting ultra excited and pumped up or getting straight up angry and furious. We've been fortunate enough to listen to so many great, passionate announcers in our lives. But the best is when they display the same levels of emotion as everyday fans just like us. Number 10, Joe Starkey's Owens, Owens, Owens. The San Francisco 49ers hosted the Green Bay Packers in the 1998 NFC wildcard round. The Packers had eliminated the 49ers from the playoffs in each of the previous three years, including the 1997 NFC Championship game at Candlestick Park. Well, this showdown was by far the very best in the Packers 49ers rivalry during the 90s. The Niners saw a 23-20 lead disappear when Farr found Antonio Freeman in the end zone for the go-ahead touchdown, with just under two minutes to play. But that was too much time for Young and the 49ers, however. They were bailed out by a missed Jerry Rice fumble that would have sealed the game for the Pack. Moments later, Young found Terrell Owens in the end zone for the game-winning touchdown, and 49ers radio play-by-play -play man Joe Starkey provided the legendary call that we all know and love today. Young almost falls down, throws to the end zone. Owens! 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 Caught it! He caught it! He caught it! That was the beginning of Terrell Owens' legendary Hall of Fame career, and that was an excellent call that we'll all remember forever. Number nine, the Bruins get screwed and Jack Edwards goes nuts. Longtime Boston Bruins play-by-play -play announcer Jack Edwards has developed a reputation for being, well, everything. Extremely passionate, sometimes fiery, and often quite biased. And sometimes you get all three at once from Jack. While most announcers avoid homerism and bottle up any frustration they might have, Edwards is an exception to that rule. We've seen this guy lose it on officials many times before, but nothing stands out more than the 2014 game between the Bruins and Columbus Blue Jackets. During this contest, the puck clearly hit the netting, which would have meant a stop and play, but the officials didn't notice the puck going out of play, so the action continued. Moments later, the Blue Jackets scored to go ahead 5-2. However, the NHL rulebook doesn't allow referees to review times where the puck may have hit the netting before bouncing back in play. The officials weren't able to review this goal, and Edwards wasn't the least bit happy about it. There it goes. This is out of play. It's the netting. This is unbelievable. This is unbelievable that the National Hockey League has let this happen. He was especially angry about the NHL promising to correct this specific situation before the start of the 2014 and 15 season. But the league never got to it, and Edwards ran it for practically an entire minute before the second period ended. This is the exact situation they illustrated that they said they were going to correct, and this is going to virtually put the game away. Tell us how you really feel, Jack. Number eight, Steve Bacant, not possible. The Washington Wizards have been one of the more mediocre franchises in the 21st century, but at least longtime announcer Steve Bacant has provided this frustrated fan base with so many hilarious and entertaining calls. Bacant puts the homer in homerism, and we mean that in a good way. You can never get too much of a play-by-play -play commentator voicing their emotions and passion, especially when they're not happy. He has two specific moments that stand out from the rest, and they were both home games against the Toronto Raptors. The first one, Morris Peterson made an unlikely three-pointer at the buzzer to force overtime, much to the chagrin of Bacant. They go the length of the court, Ruffin tips it away, and... No! Not possible! Oh yes, it's possible, Steve. And if that wasn't too much for Bacant, Wait till you see his reaction when the Raptors hit another unlikely three-point shot at the buzzer. Leave this guy alone, Toronto. Parker. No! It's not possible! But he did it! Again, Steve, yes, it is possible. Number seven, Gus Johnson on Brandon Stokely's miracle catch. The Denver Broncos visited the Cincinnati Bengals in week one of the 2009 season. 
and it wasn't looking good for Kyle Orton and company. The Broncos were back way up inside their own 15 with 28 seconds to go in one timeout, and they were down by one point. And there was no time to throw the ball into the middle of the field. So the Broncos had to hope for the best and pray for a miracle. Orton threw a deep ball along the left sidelines near a handful of Bengal defenders. And veteran receiver Brandon Stokely just happened to be in the right place at the right time. And CBS announcer Gus Johnson ensured that this play would go down in history with this epic and memorable call. Orton bumps again to the sideline. Batted up. Oh, God! Stokely down the sideline! Can they catch him? Touchdown! I, I kind of miss Gus Johnson calling NFL games. Put him on your broadcast team, Fox. Number six, Hawk Harrelson on Mark Burley's perfection. Aside from their 2005 World Series, the Chicago White Sox haven't been a very good baseball team. But hey, the fans were lucky enough to have the legendary Hawk Harrelson as the play-by-play -play guy for so many years. Hawk Harrelson has had a long list of incredible play-by-play -play calls, but his absolute best was when White Sox pitcher Mark Burley pitched the perfect game against the Tampa Bay Rays. Burley had a handful of close calls throughout the game, but he just kept flirting with perfection. And when the 27th out came along, Harrelson uttered just one itsy bitsy tiny three letter word that made Burley's perfect game all the more special. Alexei! Yes! 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 Number five, Tommy Heinsohn, ridiculous. Love or hate the Boston Celtics, I think it's safe to say that everybody loves a little bit of commentary from franchise great Tommy Heinsohn. The man isn't afraid to show his homerism. We always have a soft spot for people like that. In a game between the Celtics and Cleveland Cavaliers, Kelly Olenek was issued a foul for making slight contact on Kyrie Irving. The Celtics were leading by 12 points late in the game, but Heinsohn was disgusted by the call, and he went crazy. Oh, this is ridiculous. Call for a personal foul. That was absolutely ridiculous! To make matters worse for Heinsohn, the Cavaliers actually stormed back to win 122-121. to 121. That we might say is ridiculous. Number four, Martin Tyler Aguero. The 2011 and 12 English Premier League title was coming down to the final minutes. Manchester City just needed a win to secure the championship or they needed a Manchester United loss. Well, things were looking bleak for Man City because Manchester United took care of business with a 1-0 victory over Sunderland. And Manchester City was trailing 2-1 at home to the Queen's Park Rangers in injury time. One goal wasn't going to be enough. Man City needed two, quickly. They scored one goal to tie the game, but one more tally was still required. Mario Balotelli fed the ball to Sergio Aguero, who made a beautiful move and booted in the game-winning goal, sending all of Man City into a frenzy. And Martin Tyler had his defining moment as an EPL commentator with a glorious call. Manchester City is still alive here. Balotelli, Aguero! Manchester City won the EPL title in the most unlikely fashion imaginable. But again, Martin Tyler added more magic to this moment with his epic Aguero screen. Number three, Paul Allen ain't happy with Brett Favre. The Minnesota Vikings met the New Orleans Saints in the 2009 NFC Championship game. And it was a true classic. Two all-time greats in Brett Favre and Drew Brees went blow for blow for four quarters. But it was Favre and the Vikings who got the ball late in the fourth quarter with the game tied 28 to 28. The Vikings drove deep into Saints territory inside their 40 with 19 seconds to go. They were faced with a third and 15 and Favre was simply trying to get some big yardage back to set up an easy game winning field goal. Attempt. Favre rolled out to the right and made the Cardinal quarterback Santa throwing across his body. He was picked off by Tracy Porter, thus foiling Minnesota's chance to put the game away. Vikings radio man Paul Allen who's had to deal with so many heartbreaking playoff losses throughout his career as a broadcaster, wasted no time criticizing Favre here. He went from radio play-by-play -play guy to an angry and frustrated superfan. Why do you even ponder passing? I mean, you can take a knee and try a 56-yard field goal. This is not Detroit, man. This is the Super Bowl. You know what happened next? The Saints got the ball to start overtime, and kicker Garrett Hartley booted the game winner to send the franchise to Super Bowl 44. They would go on to defeat the Colts, winning their first Lombardi trophy in franchise history. To this day, Allen and Vikings fans continue to wonder why Favre threw the ball across his body. After all, that was not Detroit, man. That was the Super Bowl. Number two, Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Longtime Buffalo Sabres announcer Rick Jenneret is, in a word, the GOAT. This man has the greatest voice and catchphrases and hockey calls of all time. 
every single hockey fan loves Rick Jenner. Rick. He's an absolute icon to the game. The Hockey Hall of Famer has a long list of famous calls, but none stands out more than May Day. It was the opening round of the 1993 playoffs where the Sabres met the heavily favored Boston Bruins. The Sabres won the first three games and took Boston to overtime in game four. Tough guy Brad May would score the series clinching goal in the extra frame, which gave birth to the most iconic call of Jenner's career. Gets it to May and over the line, he's May going in on goal, he shoots, he scores! Number one, Russ Hodges shot her round the world. Giants and Brooklyn Dodgers played a best of three series to determine who would take home the National League pennant in 1951. The Giants took game one by a score of three to one, but the Dodgers responded with a 10-0 shellacking in game two. And so the two teams went back to the polo grounds in Manhattan for the winner take all game three. The Dodgers scored three runs in the eighth and led four to zero heading into the bottom of the ninth but the Giants rallied and chipped away at the Dodgers' lead. Finally, Bobby Thompson came up to bat with a chance to win the series for the Giants. Thompson smacked the ball over the left field wall for the walk-off home run. Along with the play itself, Giants announcer Russ Hodges went down in baseball lore with this epic call. Back and throw. In case you didn't know, the Giants won the pennant. What other epic moments had an announcer go crazy? Join us in the comment section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps us out a ton and we truly appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.